Hey, what's up? It's Brian Hunkan's Crabtree, and I just woke up, and I'm wearing a bathrobe because the girl squirted in my bed last night, and uh, yeah, such is life. I'm here in Jakarta, and let's talk about that massage, but first, cold shower time. And we're gonna talk about vaginismus. All right, so I need to start meditating in like a minute. Fuck. Gratitude journal time. I used to do it just like three things and now I broke it up into one relationship, which is my accountability partner, who's like really kicking my ass. Opportunity, which today is to record a good vlog. Something that happened yesterday, which is I recorded what I think was a really good massage. And then something simple, which is this pool. It's just a nice little quiet. All right, now let's get some breakfast. So I'm gonna try not to go too crazy on breakfast. Uh, like I have a full work day. I normally don't eat breakfast, but if there's a nice breakfast, I'll eat a nice breakfast. I'm not sure if this qualifies as not going crazy, but basically got a lot of salad, chicken, kimchi, more veggies. Still some shrimp. This is that roll mop. I don't know what the fuck that is. I think it's like anchovies or something. Hummus. I think those are like mushrooms. And then this big ass omelet over here. So I'm basically gonna make this my big ass meal until dinner. Vaginismus. You've probably never heard of it. So what the fuck is it and why should you even care? I'm gonna start with a story that happened in Singapore two years ago. I was contacted by an Indian guy and like an Indian Indian guy, not Indian Singaporean from India. And he was like 25, young professional, married and still a virgin. Yes, he'd been married for two years and him and his wife were still virgins. So we're messaging and he starts to tell me the backstory and I'm like, what the fuck? So I go online and I Google it and I start to figure out what vaginismus is all about. So thanks to Wikipedia, I discovered it's when a woman basically has a phobia of penetration. So for someone with a phobia of water, it's backing away from the water. Like, ah, I'm not going the fuck in there. And for a girl with vaginismus, it's like, put your dick away, put your fingers away, get them away from my vag, and stop, stop, stop. So I'd read up on it and I was like, all right, well, I'll meet you and your wife and I'll see what I can do. So as I prepared for this session, I learned there are basically just two ways to treat a phobia, like the fear of water or the fear of penetration. Number one is cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a fancy term for unraveling fucked up thoughts. And I think the fucked up thoughts comes down to basically bad probabilities. So if you have a fear of drowning, you're like, well, what's the probability that you're going to fall into the pool and drown? It's like, well, it's very high. I mean, I read in the newspaper all the time about kids drowning and boats going down and people drowning. Of course, if you're scared of drowning, you are going to fixate on those articles. And if you're skimming through the paper, you're going to pick them out because that's something that you're already thinking about and scared about and it triggers you in that way. That's a cognitive bias. We all have it, but if unchecked, what's gonna happen is over time, you're gonna have more weird and weird and weird thoughts and your probability is gonna be all skewed. So for some people, you're getting on a plane and you're all fidgety about the flight, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I don't know if it's gonna crash. There's gonna be an explosion. There's maybe some fucking terrorists. And then your plane lands safely and you get in the taxi and you don't put on your seatbelt. That's the kind of stupid shit that happens when you're fixating on the wrong stuff. Because statistically, sitting on an airplane is like the safest place in the entire world and being in a car without a seatbelt is way, way, way more dangerous. So for the person with the fear of drowning, that edge case scenario of actually dying and drowning is like all they're thinking about. They're like, well, that's probably pretty probable. I think that might actually happen. Eh, probably not. And then for the girl with the fear of penetration, she's like, wow, it's gonna hurt so much. I might bleed uncontrollably. I might have to go to the hospital. Maybe it'll like split something if it's too forceful and I'll have to go in and like get it stitched up. Of course, those are all actual things that could happen. They're just edge cases. And if you Google that shit and you read about it a lot and you fixate on it, then you're going to think that that's more probable than it actually is. What's actually more probable is your first time. Yeah, it's going to hurt. And then like the next day, it'll be fine. And it's not actually just a roll of the dice thing. You can control the situation by picking a partner or teaching your partner so that they know how to do it in a way that's not gonna hurt you. Because fact, the first time that you have sex or that you're penetrated, it doesn't have to hurt. So that's the reality of the situation. If you warm up to it properly, you control the situation. The edge case is that you'll have a lot of pain, but then probably you'll just feel like kind of uncomfortable. You're still getting used to it, but it won't be that bad. Versus I'm gonna be in the hospital. My pussy's gonna be fucked. I'm gonna bleed everywhere. It's gonna be the most embarrassing thing I've ever had happen to me in my entire life. So the first way to get over a phobia is cognitive behavioral therapy, untangling those fucked up up thoughts. Then the second way to get over a phobia is systematic desensitization. So if there was like a kid who was like freaked out about the fucking water, what you would do is be like, here, 
you know, play, play on your phone, play a game, and you can sit, you know, like right over here next to the water and just like play on your phone, be comfortable. So at first he might walk out and his heart's a little bit like water, water, water. And then he's sitting there, he's chilling out, his heartbeat starts to go down, cortisol starts to go away, starts to relax. And then you might be like, hey, come over here and sit by the pool, just on the ground over there where it's kind of wet, just sit in that wet spot. Play on your phone, play your game, we're all just hanging out. Just sitting there, not even in the water, just sitting on that wet spot. Again, he's gonna be a little bit like, water, I'm kind of wet, like, ah! But then, like, relax, everybody else is relaxed, he's playing his game, like, all right. And then you might be like, all right, how about these steps? Just sort of come over here, just put your feet in there, just like one toe, just, just your toe. He's still, like, very much not in the water. It's such a, such a small movement, right? For him to do that, it's, it's probable that he could actually do that and not freak out and then keep doing it gradually maybe get a little bit closer to the edge of the water maybe hang your legs all the way over so they're dangling in the water and then deeper 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 keep it light keep the conversation sort of not about the water keep it about kind of you know something else like we're all just having fun chill out and yeah that's systematic desensitization is that all gonna happen over one minute no is that all gonna happen over one hour probably not is it gonna happen over one day eh, maybe maybe not is it gonna happen over like a week I think if you did it every day you'll help him helping the kid kind of talking him through it stuff like that I think in a week, you'd be good to go. And it's the exact same thing with the girl who fears penetration. It's sort of like having a muscle spasm or a muscle cramp that's painful. There's no stimulus outside of your body that's actually causing you to have pain. It's just your body's reaction itself that is causing the pain. So hardcore vaginismus, you just think about penetration, it's like, oh shit, your pussy like tightens up so much that it hurts. So phobias are a spectrum. You have some people who even the thought of the thing will freak them the fuck out. And then you have other people who are still scared, but it's just of those edge case scenarios. Like if you drop me in the ocean and I know that there's like no bottom and there's sort of like, I'm not really sure what's going on down there. I'm not really sure if there's land around and if the boat forgets about me. Like, yeah, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not scared of the water or of drowning or of swimming, but yeah, in that situation, like I would be a little bit scared. So fear of drowning, everybody's on that spectrum somewhere. And fear of penetration for girls, every girl is on that spectrum somewhere. So back to our story two years ago, I'd done all this research, I'd figured out sort of my approach, what I was gonna do. So I wanted to do it at their place so the girl would be super comfortable and I'd been prepping the guy about how to prepare the room so that it was very relaxing. So I showed up, the guy was obviously very nervous. He let me in and the girl was there sitting on the couch, you know, very sort of like, oh, can I help you with anything? Like just sort of like very tense. So I brought a bottle of wine, we opened that up and that at least started to cool things down and break the ice. But honestly, the ice was not broken. It was still a bit awkward. That was two years ago. I wasn't as good at getting people comfortable as I am now. But also those fucked up thoughts, they just take a long time to unravel. There's usually a long history behind that. I read in a book about therapy that if it's hysterical, it's historical. So one glass of wine is not just gonna wipe all of whatever that history is away. So after a lot of chit chat, I sort of showed them what I had. I had some oil and I had a towel, like a little sort of sarong for the girl. And I was like, all right, you know, whenever we're ready, what you can do is you can go into the bathroom, put this on, and I'm gonna put a towel on. And then we're gonna go into the bedroom. Can I see the bedroom? And then we sort of walk in there, take a look like, oh, okay, this is nice. Let's make it a little bit warmer. I brought a speaker. Let's get some music going, make it nice and relaxing. I also brought some candles. Let me set those up. Now I was also very, very clear that I wasn't just going to like penetrate her because I knew that that was the fear. She's thinking the moment that she like closes her eyes and relax, I'm gonna be like, ha ha ha, and then just like fucking go for it. Like, ah, right, That's that, that was her fear, I knew that. So I was like, here's how this is gonna work if you're okay with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you lie face down and I'm just gonna give you like a back row, just a normal sort of shoulder, arm, back row. Make sure you're nice and comfortable with that. And if anything feels uncomfortable or a little weird or anything, just let me know and I'll do something that's a little less scary. For example, if I'm going down towards your lower back and you feel a little bit like, uh, just let me know. And then I'll go back up, 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 up towards the top of your back where you're more comfortable. Because jerking or pushing me away is going to sort of harden that perception that that level of stimulation is too much. But if she tells me, oh, I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable, and then I decrease the stimulation, I go somewhere that she's already feeling comfortable, that starts to diffuse that panic response that fight or flight response because once that's turned on, there's no more thinking, it's all over, like you have to wait 10, 15 minutes, I mean, something like that 
until somebody can really start to think again. You know, if I'm recording this and then a snake like comes down right here, I'm not gonna be able to just talk about shit for like 30 minutes. That would freak the fuck out of me. I fucking hate snakes. But on the other hand, if I was like over in the corner of my vision, like way over there, if I saw a snake and I was like, oh shit, that's a snake. And then I move away from it, like I actually take control and I just, move myself away from the snake, I'd be like, that was pretty stressful, but I'd be back to normal pretty quickly. So instead of her sitting there like, ah, oh, this is getting uncomfortable, this is getting uncomfortable, this is getting, and then she freaks out finally. What I told her to do was tell me when it starts to feel a little uncomfortable, just vocalize it, just say it. Keep that communication going, let me know if it feels a little uncomfortable, and I'll make sure to turn down the fire on the stove. And then once you're good to go, you're totally relaxed, then we'll start to increase it again. And you're gonna find that you can actually take a little bit more stimulation after you've had a little bit of a cool down. So after the introductions, the wine, the icebreakers, sort of the expectation setting, making sure the room was all good to go, she went into the bathroom, put on the sarong, and then she came on out. Now, side note, the guy was in the room, which now I would not recommend. I don't think that's actually a good idea because there's always emotional baggage between her and him, and I don't really have control over that, where if it's just me and her, I sort of have control over helping her feel as relaxed as possible. That, that's my take on it right now. But the guy beforehand had been like, hey, if she gets really relaxed, maybe we can have a threesome. I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way. Just focus on fucking getting your dick in your wife first once before you even think about crazy shit like that. Like get that thought out of your head, like completely out of your head because that's gonna fuck you up. So guys watching this, if your girl cannot accept as much stimulation as you would like her to be able to accept or if she would like herself to be able to accept, you know, maybe she can't take really deep sort of vaginal stimulation or maybe she's more extreme and even, you know, sort of external stuff will trigger her. Be supportive and help her work through it. Don't try to fucking skip to crazy shit. Just go step by step be patient. You gotta be patient or else you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. So she comes out of the bathroom, she's wearing her sarong, she's obviously a little bit uncomfortable, but I tell her to sit down on the bed and then I tell her to lie down, face down, and by this time I'm also wearing my towel. And then to start things out, I just did exactly what I said I was gonna do. I just started out with her back. Not a big sexual vibe, just very relaxing and helping her breathe and chill out. And then when it seemed like she was cool with her back, I skipped down to her feet, skipped over the butt, and then started very, 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 very slowly, slowly started to work up the legs to where it was starting to get a little bit sensitive. And then I skipped back up to the back, work that, work down to the butt, sort of start to work on the butt to make sure she's comfortable with that. But very slowly, this whole process I just described in like 10 seconds probably took an hour. And then it was just a lot of stimulation on like sort of the outside of the butt. So again, she's face down, right? So just sort of like using my palm, using the less threatening part of my hand. Then for the spread the legs part in my videos, I usually sort of do that all at once. That's harder for a girl with vaginismus because she's like, whoa, that's like, I'm really exposed. Like just spread one leg a little bit and then spread the other one a little bit and then go back to the rubbing and then spread one leg a little bit and then the, you know, just very, very slowly, very gradually. And this was already more stimulation than she was able to accept before. So this was a win. She was doing good. She was making progress. But then when I tried to take like two fingers and sort of slide them down to where the leg intersects with the sort of crotch area, right? Sort of that crease between the legs and the crotch. Not actually touching the pussy, but pretty close to it. Then she was like, whoa, uncomfortable. So again, broad pressure, broad pressure, help her get relaxed. And then try to sort of sneak up on that movement a little bit and then broad pressure, broad pressure, make sure she's relaxed. Then I just kept doing that like a little bit more. Eventually flipped her over, which was probably not a great idea. In flipping her over, I sort of took her a step back towards her baseline. We'd made some progress and I sort of reversed that by flipping her over because she's like looking around and sort of getting in her head again. So then I started to work her belly and she seemed to be comfortable with that. Started to work her boobs. She liked that a lot. So I was like, all right, you like this? Great. Let's do some boobs. Get you something you like. Same idea as the kid who's freaking out next to the side of the pool. Like, here, take your phone, play a game, relax. So with one hand on the boobs, got the other hand sort of sneaking down towards the badge. Couldn't get that far. I mean, she was definitely feeling a bit uncomfortable and I was like, all right, cool, cool. Pull it back up, away from there, relax. And eventually we got pretty close to me putting a finger in, but I didn't. I didn't actually get one finger in in this one session, which took maybe an hour and a half to two hours. So did she have a vaginal orgasm and I made her squirt and her life has changed 
and now she's getting gang banged on the weekends every time. I mean, no, right? But she made progress. She was happy with it. Her husband was happy with it. And if you stack those little wins on top of each other, you get somewhere. Now let's talk about the girl in the video you just watched. You can tell that she has some vaginismus. She's not as extreme as the story I just told you about, but she definitely has some. Like for example, when she's taking the initial clitoral stimulation, she's very sort of like spasmy, right? Like I'll be touching something that maybe feels good, but it's like, it's very sort of like, you'll see her entire body flinch. And she wasn't vocal. Like she wasn't having sort of a deep breathing sort of like, oh, you know, something like that. It was a very sort of, <laughs> So she was able to take some stimulation, but it was a very shallow amount. It's kind of like your body line out is just a lot of wine glasses, right? And then you're taking some wine and you're pouring it right on the wine glass that's on like your crotch, your genital area. And if you keep your body very tight and you're breathing very constricted and you're sort of just nervous and sort of a little ball of tension, then what's happening is that wine is filling up in that one glass until it finally overflows and you're done. So if you're breathing into the increased stimulation, it's like that wine is filling up all the glasses at the same time. Instead of just filling up one and then you're done, it's like you're filling it up and then you're sort of taking a breather, you're relaxing and then that wine spreads out and then you can fill up some more, it's just more sexual energy flowing through your body. And then finally, when all of the glasses are full, they all overflow at the same time and you have a more of like powerful or sort of fulfilling orgasm. And that spectrum we talked about, that's basically how many glasses are you able to accept before you sort of just can't take it and maybe you come or you like push the person away or something like that. And remember, every girl is on the spectrum of vaginismus about how much stimulation can she accept comfortably. And if you're a guy watching this and you're like, what's wrong with these fucking bitches? Why can't they just relax and be fucked? What the fuck is wrong? Consider how comfortable you would be if someone took a big dildo and they're like, hey, I'm gonna just sort of stick it in your butt and stimulate, you know, your prostate. I'm just gonna give you a prostate massage. Just fucking relax, okay? Relax, all right, let's go. Are you going to be able to just like relax your asshole open and just like, oh, uh, like get into it? Probably not. Like, I know I would not. I would be very tense. So give the girls a little love. They're just working with the same kind of thing. Plus they have all these ideas that like the first time is gonna hurt and they're gonna bleed and you know, they're gonna break their hymen and blah, 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 right? If you're watching this and you're a guy and you're like, yeah, I think my girl's got some of that vaginist but shit. Or you're a girl watching this and you're like, yeah, I think I got some of that issue. You don't have to see somebody who's gonna like give you a massage and give you more and more stimulation. You don't have to do that. You can do it yourself. You basically just very, very, very slowly start to finger yourself. And when it starts to feel a little bit uncomfortable, you pull back and then just chill out around that spot. And then you go back to the spot that was making you uncomfortable and you should feel a little less uncomfortable. And then you just chill out there and then go on to the next spot. So you just sort of like stage it. If you're willing to do the work, you will get the progress. If you do not do the work, you will not get the progress, so it's up to you. But for all these things that require work and dedication and you know pushing your boundaries, it's important to have a vision for what you're going to achieve once you actually get the progress, right? And the vision is you're gonna be able to have wild, crazy sex with the person you love. You're gonna be able to have a baby. If you, know, you have hardcore vaginismus, you can't get pregnant. And when you're sitting around with your girlfriends, you're gonna be able to relate to their stories about sex. You're gonna be able to share your own stories. You're gonna be able to just enjoy that part of like, like not even mammals, just so many fucking organisms on earth, fuck. It's a very basic thing. So you're gonna be part of that. And when you get past it, you're gonna have more intimate experiences, more emotional, more sexual experience, just more fun, and you can actually have a family. And then on the cognitive behavioral therapy, if you wanna see a therapist and just sort of talk through some of these issues, somebody who you can just be open with, because maybe your friends, you can't really be open with them, they won't understand. Let's be like, you just get drunk and you just get fucked, and that's how you do it your first time, right? Like, that's not the advice you want. So talk to somebody you like, who's gonna listen to you, and who's going to be like, yeah, that's that's true. Like, I see what you're saying, but have you thought about this? Have you thought, like, maybe you're thinking this a little bit wrong? And just sort of tweak your thoughts. That's what you need. But that's kind of a pain in the ass, seeing a therapist. Some therapists suck balls, right? But to get there, you need to do homework. So just decide to start very slowly, stimulating yourself in ways that make you a little bit uncomfortable, and then pull back from that and stimulate somewhere else. You know, get some nice oil or some nice lube, something like that. Put on some music, chill out. Do this before you sleep for maybe 15 minutes minutes, even less, even five minutes every night, and you are gonna see serious progress within a week, within two weeks, like for real, just try it. That would be amazing. I know you're probably not gonna fucking do it, but you know, maybe somebody watching this video will do it. Maybe like one person, like honestly, maybe one person. Good book.
All right, I'm gonna get a little work done. Then I'm gonna move into a cheaper place here in Jakarta because I'm here for like three more days and then I fly off to Manila. And I always do my massages in like super nice places like this. But then when I'm not doing a massage on like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I usually just stay at a cheap fucking place. My vision for six months from now is to be staying in a nice place every single time that I'm touring. But for now, I'm trying to save some money. Things on my to-do list. My website is fucking slow, so I need to hire somebody off of Upwork to just optimize shit so people don't like, what the fuck? Back, back, back. And then I need to book my flight and my hotel in Manila. Anyway, let's get into it. I booked my flight, I booked my hotel, and I managed to get a 3 p.m. checkout. Now it's 3.05, so I need to actually start packing. It's 3.15, so hopefully I can stick around until like 5.30ish when they serve some food, and then I'll get out of here and go to my uh, place for the next couple days. 4.43. That means they didn't kick me out. That means I get some free food. Okay, my grab is coming in like three minutes. It's already downstairs, so time to change from my five-star hotel to my less than five-star hotel. Thank you. Right. Here we go. This place actually has a gym and they have fast Wi-Fi and they have pretty good like bunk beds, like not too bad. Hello, how are you doing? All right, so I haven't even checked in my room yet, but I need to get a couple things done. So yeah, just set up my computer, start working. All right, so I'm actually not done working. I'm gonna keep going for like another hour or so, but I need to get this footage out of my camera and up onto the internet so that my editor, who is awesome and in Estonia, can edit it over the next couple hours. And when I wake up tomorrow, I can do a quick review. So before the big reveal about where I'm actually gonna sleep tonight, remember today we were talking about vaginismus and how all girls are somewhere on that spectrum? It's kind of noisy, huh? Yeah, okay. I've been with a lot of girls that have been in different places on that spectrum. And I've asked them a lot of questions about like, you know, do they masturbate, for example? How many sexual partners have they had, for example? And I'm starting to figure out what the contributing factors are to where a girl is on that spectrum. And the more sexual stimulation that she can accept and that she can breathe into, more likely she's gonna be able to squirt. Girls can move up the spectrum. So you can like, you know, accept more sexual stimulation over time. And if you're a guy, you can help your girl do the same thing. But it's good to know where your girl is because if she's kind of far down here, you don't wanna to try to make her squirt tonight. You know, you wanna to try to work her up a little bit more before you try to make her squirt. So I made something called the squirt quiz and it's just five or six or seven questions. I've been tweaking it over the last couple months to make it better and better. So if you wanna know like Google Maps style where you are on that spectrum and how much sort of work there is to do before you can maybe squirt or before you can have like a vaginal orgasm, then go up to your browser address bar, type in hunkhands.com slash quiz. That's hunkhands.com slash quiz. And then once you get your result and you know where you are on the spectrum, then, you know, like next steps, right? I'm gonna give you some personalized tips. I'm gonna tell you the things that you should work on based on exactly where you are to help you squirt and to help you just have more fun in bed. To be able to accept more wine in your wine glasses, that when you come, it's more of a full body experience. Sound good? Go up to your dress bar, hunkands.com, type it in, slash quiz, and right away, you're just gonna answer a couple questions, get your personalized result, get your personalized tips, right away, completely for free. Now let's see where the fuck I'm gonna be sleeping. <laughs> 